So 1.5, solve linear equations containing fractions. Everything else remains the same. It's just we got to remember how to operate with our fractions, all right? So operations with fractions are going to look something like this. Uh, and hopefully you guys remember this kind of stuff. Where when you add fractions, notice the B denominator right here just shows that the denominator has to be the same. Once the denominators are the same, and that may take some manipulation on our part, we can just simply add the two numerators. Same with a subtraction. Once they're the same, then you can just subtract the two numerators. So it's only those two operations, though, with fractions that we need common denominators. When we're looking at multiplication and division, we do not need common denominators. Just keep in mind, though, that uh, multiplication of fractions, just simply multiply the two numerators together, like A and C, and then multiply the two denominators together, like in this case B and D, and then you would have a fraction. Now you'd look to simplify that if you could, um, which I guess we'll see if we can go over here in a second. But the division, okay, um, one thing you guys need to remember about division of fractions is that we don't actually end up dividing fractions, okay? We only multiply them. So we can change division of fractions into multiplication. Just notice what happened to this uh, second part of the division. It, we had to, we had to uh, flip it. And that's called the reciprocal. If we reciprocate the fraction on the right there, um, which is called the divisor in a division problem right there, it's the divisor. If you reciprocate it, then you can change the division into multiplication. I'm not going to go into those in too much detail. If you need more information on those, um, I've made videos with my other classes that may help you, but that's as far as I'm going to go on this one. Yeah, and again, I, I want to stress this out. A solution would make is a value of the variable, which in this case would say x, that would make the equation true. Don't forget that. And then principles of equality is just simply manipulation of equations to be what you want them. Yeah, so it's just manipulating the equations to be what you want them to be. Bam. That's all. Uh, but use the principles of equality. Um, switch and stay game does work for fractions, though, you guys. So if you want, if you're like, yeah, I can add and subtract fractions just fine. Um, and you should because you can use a calculator. Uh, but yeah, you could use the switch and stay game on these if you'd like. So here's our first equation. Now, if this was, let's compare this, okay? Let's compare this to a different type of equation, like 4x equals 12, like this. Okay, now, if, if you saw 4x equals 12, uh, hopefully you know what to do at that point, right? You'd say, I know that I need 1x, and how do I change a 4 into 1? You just divide it by 4. Divide it by itself, the coefficient, right? Those are 4s. Uh, then you'd say, well, x is 3 in this case. Now, that's a, that's a separate example. Separate that in your mind if you can. Um... I, can, I wonder if I can move. Yeah, oh, that's very nice. Okay, so uh, what did we do to solve that problem? It was a one-stepper, so all we needed to do was divide both sides by the coefficient, right? Well, as it turns out, it works with fractions as well. So I could take four-thirds and divide it by four-thirds, and now it's a compound fraction, and I can show it differently on the right if I'd like. I'm going to divide it by four-thirds, right? Now, four-thirds divided by four-thirds is one, so I have created 1b, which is what I would want. But to, to show and expand the work on this one, not that you'd need to because you can use a calculator, I got that 12 fifths, which is great. Uh, that's the dividend right there. 12 fifths, we're just going to keep it like it is. But I'm going to flip that fraction, right? I'm going to reciprocate that fraction into 3 fourths, which then allows me to change the multiplication, I'm sorry, the division into multiplication. And at this point, I would be looking to simplify this as much as I could before I started the multiplication, right? Like the 12 and 4 could simplify each other. Now, do you have to use this method? You do not. Uh, and there's other methods that we can use, and we may see them. But 12, and four, 12 divided by 4 would be the same as 3 over 1. All right, so I can cross-simplify at that point. Now I'm looking to multiply my numerators, which in this case now is 3 and 3, which is 9. And then 5 times 1, which is 5. And I'm okay with this improper fraction, so I'm going to leave it as is. But I am going to check my problem right here by um, 
typing this into my calculator, 4 thirds times 9 fifths, because I've replaced the B with the 9 fifths there, and sure enough, it gave me 12 fifths. I'll show it to you guys. It's, the light's not great right there, but trying to help. Oh, that's good. Four four thirds times nine fifths. There we go. Uh, and it gave us that uh, twelve fifths. It's good. So this one will work um, a little bit different, right? Because it's not a one stepper. And we do have x well y's on both sides of the equation on this one. So, but the same idea works, right? You can say, well, I, I want my y's on the right. I'm sorry, the left, and the numbers on the right there, right there. So. I got that plus 9. It's on the wrong side of the equal sign. That's no good. So I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to add it to its opposite, which is just the same as subtracting it from itself. And that's going to zero that out. And now I've got that 1 fourth y now. 1 fourth y equals 1 third y. Yeah, we can drop that too. But negative 5 minus 9 is going to give us a negative 14 right there. Alright, so this is now, it's simplified, it may not look so much better, it may still give us a little anxiety, and that's okay, because we can work with it. Uh, but at this point, I'd say, well, I got that one-third y, it is on the wrong side, so I'm going to subtract one-third y from both sides of the equal sign as well. Alright, so that zeroes out, and that's good, I'm going to drop my negative 14 here. And whatever it is, it's going to equal. So I got one fourth minus one third y. And again, you could type this into a calculator. I'm I am going to show the work for it though. So this is uh, I'll show the work up here. One fourth. I I don't need the y's. It's just one fourth minus one third, and that's how many y's there are going to be. But I need common denominators before I can subtract these. And I know you guys are already thinking, do it. I use my calculator and I'm done. Uh, sorry, uh, it's still going to work out the same. Uh, I'm going to use a, uh, a denominator of 12 on this, so I'm going to multiply the 4 by 3 to make it a denominator of 12, which means i got to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. And the 3 I'm going to multiply by 4 to make it a 12, which means I'm going to multiply the 1 by 4 as well. So I've got... I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the coefficient is with, with my work here you know, in the orange up here. And then once I figure that out, I'll fill in the coefficient of y right there. Because I, I don't know what 1 fourth minus 1 third is. Well, I do, but I'm showing the work for it, right? So now that I've got 3 twelfths minus 4 twelfths, uh, I know I'm dealing in twelfths, and 3 minus 4 would be negative 1. So uh, going back to this y business, it would be negative 1 twelfth y, like this, right? Well, just uh, we're looking at a problem like the one we just barely solved in that last slide. So what am I going to do to solve this thing? I'm just going to divide it by the coefficient, which in this case is negative 1 12th, because anything divided by itself is 1, making that 1 y, which is great, and negative 14 divided by negative 1 over 12. That's going to be pretty easy once it's finished. It's negative 14 times. I'm just going to make that negative 12, you guys. I should not need to show that as negative 12 over 1, because I made that already a phantom 1. Now, I, I'm not familiar with my four, uh, 12 times tables up to that high, so I'm going to do negative 12 times negative 14, which gives me y equals 168 on my calculator. Uh, but again, going back, and you should always check this, and I want you guys to get in the habit of checking. So I got 1 fourth times 168 plus 9. What does that give me? Give me 51. Let's try 1 third times 168 minus 5. Bam, sure enough, 51. So that came out really nice for us. And it, it proves, it shows that 168 is the solution uh, or replacement for y that would make this a true statement. So the second method uh, for solving problems with fractions is where we look at the denominators of all the terms. So in this case, I need to identify the, the denominators of terms that don't show the denominator, like the 9. I'm going to show that as 9 over 1. And also the negative 5. I'll show it as negative 5 over 1. Uh, now, what I really would like out of this is for the denominators to be all the same, because just like we need with adding and subtracting fractions, where we need common denominators, um, and the reason we need that is because it gives us the same size pieces. 
And once the sizes are the same, which is what the denominators tell us, the denominator tells us the size of the piece, then we actually get to, to ignore the size. We just worry about how many there are. That doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but I hope it does here in a second. So I would look at these denominators. I got three different denominators, four, three, and one. And I, I should think about lowest common multiple of these three numbers. And it doesn't even have to be the lowest. They just need to be common, by the way. So I would think, you know, what, what is a common multiple of 3 and 4? And we've seen it already with 12, right? So what this means is if I could take all four terms, 1 fourth y, positive 9 over 1, 1 over 3y, and negative 5 over 1, and if I could make the denominators the same, we can make some magic happen, some real magic. So, how do I make this 4 a 12? Well, I multiply it by 3. Okay, but again, I'm scaling the fraction, so I also... So, I, I multiply the numerator by 3 as well, which is then going to make that 3 over 12y. And again, I just want you guys to notice that the value of the fraction has not changed. I've just manipulated it into looking a little different, specifically into a denominator of 12 different. I'm going to do the same thing with 9 over 1, but I, I'm just manipulating the 1 for now. I want to manipulate it into a 12. Since I'm scaling a fraction, I need to multiply or divide it. In this case, I'm just going to multiply it by 12, because that very quickly is going to make that denominator 12. But I've got to multiply the 9 by 12 as well, and 12 times 9 is 108. This is all positive, so I'm going to show it as plus. And again, it, this may seem... Uh, laborious at this time, but there's a purpose in it. I promise it's coming. So the three, 1 over 3, right, I'm going to multiply that by 4 to make the denominator 12, but I need to scale the numerator as well, so I'm going to multiply the 1 by 4 as well. So this then becomes 4 over 12. Why? And finally, I'm at that negative 5 over 1, and I'm going to make that 1 a 12 by multiplying it by 12. That was a bad 2. That's, that's good. So now it is 12. 1 times 12 is 12. But 5 times 12 for the numerator is going to make that 60. So it's negative 60 over 12. Now this is where the magic really happens on this because we've manipulated exactly like we want so that the numerators are, I'm sorry, the denominators are all the same. When the denominators are all the same, and it has to be the same for all the terms, then we get to ignore them. Here's what I mean. Just write, what the heck, there we go. Write the equation now, but without any denominators. So 3y equals, I'm sorry, I'm working on it. 3y plus 108 equals 4y minus 60. Now, if that looks better to you, like by getting rid of the fractions, uh, and most people do, pref most people like to get rid of fractions because they hate fractions. Fractions have destroyed lives, you guys. So we're looking now at an equation, but there's no fractions, um, which may make this a little bit easier for us, right? Because we could say, again, I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to do two steps in one. All right, two principles of equality in one step. I'm going to put the y's on the right. And again, I'm doing that because I don't want the negative exponent. I'm sorry, uh, coefficient and numbers on the left. So the 3y, I'm going to zero that out by subtracting 3y from both sides. Uh, but also, the negative 60, I need to zero it out by adding 60 to both sides. So that zeroes out the 3y there, and it also zeroes out the negative 60. It makes this 168 equals 1y. But of course, I could just make that a phantom 1. And that's the same answer we, we got before. We've already checked it. It was y equals 168. And so we've solved this by getting rid of the fractions. I mean, it took a little work, but we did it. I mean, really, it was kind of just this one step right here, but it works, you guys. It works. It is here. Uh, on a test, when students try this method, they, they tend to forget about these terms, like the plus 9. It's like, well, it's just 9, right? Well, yeah, but it still has a denominator. It was a phantom 1 right there. And if you forget that, it's going to throw off your answer. So when you went back to check, it, it wouldn't show up as making the statement true. 
So you got to be careful with that. Make sure you're doing it for all the terms, even if it doesn't show a denominator. And just like I did, you may have to show that denominator so you can remember that there is one. Well, I don't know about that, but I'll, I'll try to pick it up a little bit. Uh, on this one, we got, uh, we got two terms with ends right here. That means they're like terms. But the denominators are not like terms, so I can't add them yet. So I need to force them to be like terms, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, common denominators. Uh, and I don't need to change one of them because the 4 is just a multiple of 2, which means if I multiply the 2 by 2, I can get, get that denominator to be a 4. But just don't forget, if you do it to the denominator, you got to do it to the numerator as well. Otherwise, you actually have changed the value of the fraction. So now it's not just n over 2 or n over 4. It's 2n over 4. It has the same exact value right there. Now, I didn't work with anything else because it's just n over 4 plus that equals 7 fifths. But at least I have denominators that are the same, which are, is then going to allow me. And I'll, I'll put this extra step in. Not everyone needs it. But I can add my numerators on this, right? And I'll show the coefficient of just the n is 1n, okay? So 1n plus 2n over 4 equals 7 fifths. Let's, let's go ahead and add those numerators. So it's now 1n's plus 2n's is 3n's. Uh, 3n over 4. You could write that as 3 fourths n if you'd like to. And this equals 7 fifths. So I actually am going to think of that more in terms of 3 fourths n instead of 3 n fourths. Not that it matters. You know what? I take that back. I'll, I'll show it as 3 n over 4. What the heck? Oh, that's supposed to be a 5 right there. Writing's hard, man. And, and here's why. Because there are different ways to solve these, right? Like there's different methods that we can go about this and still get the same answer. So instead of this doing being one step at this point, I'm going to make it two steps. And some of you guys may hate it. You don't have to use it, okay? But uh, you could say, well, I'm just going to divide both sides by 3 fourths because it's the coefficient. No need. You can do it in two steps if you'd like. So I'm going to get rid of that denominator by making it a phantom 1 right there. But if I multiply by 4 on the left side, i got to multiply by 4 on the right side as well, which then gives me 3n equals 7 times, that's 4 over 1, so 28 fifths, right? Like this? No, there we go, fifths. And then I would divide by the coefficient, which is 3, so I'll divide it by 3 over 1. Really, it's going to be the same as multiplying by 1 over 3. So I'll multiply it by 1 over 3. I, I really did skip that only for the sake of space on that. So uh, 28, uh, I can't simplify it with the 3 or the 5. So I keep the 28, and then 5 times 3 is 15. Let me see if I can write that better. It's not letting me. Come on, iPad. I'll write it over here. 28 fifteenths equals n in this case. But I do want to check still, right? So I got my 28 over 15, and I'm going to divide that by 4. Uh, and then I will add, it was add... 28 fifteenths divided by 2. And what does that give me? 7 fifths. Bam, we did it. So that's a good answer. So yeah, just applying the same method where we get uh, the common denominator thing, right? So I, it takes a little bit of analysis at first because we need those common denominators. Oh, that's great. Uh, I'm glad to see that. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> uh, finding the common common multiple, again, it doesn't have to be the least common multiple, but if I were to look at 4, 2, and 5, right, like 4 times 2 is 8, well, 8 is not a multiple of 5. Now, what about 2 times 5? Well, that's 10. It's not a multiple of 4. What about 4 times 5? Well, that's 20. Well, yeah, 20 is a multiple of 2. That works, okay? So, I, I can see that if I just make the denominators 20, then we have this pretty good. But again, 20, well, actually 20 is the least common multiple of all, four, all three of these. It just happens to work that way. But in some cases, or in all cases, you don't really need it to be the least common multiple. You just need the, a common multiple, all right? So looking at this problem, I, I want to make the denominator 4 a denominator of 20, right? So instead of 4, it's going to be 20. 
uh, and I'd have to multiply 4 by 5. Sorry, I was, I was covering up the mic there. I've got to multiply 4 by 5 to make that 20. So I've got to multiply the numerator also by 5. Now that becomes 5n right there. 5n over 20 has the same exact value as n over 4. 2, though, I'm going to have to multiply that by 10 to make it a denominator of 20. But again, I'd have to multiply the numerator as well by 10. So now this new numerator right here is 10n plus positive 10n. And this is going to equal, so I'm at this 5 denominator, but I still want it to be a denominator of 20. I need all the terms to have the same denominator. So I'd have to multiply the 5 by 4. So I've got to multiply the 7 by 4 as well, making that 28. We did. I can see that the denominators are all the same for all three terms in this equation. So I'm going to rewrite this equation with no denominators. 5n plus 10n equals 28. And, uh, you know, if the fractions give you guys anxiety, man, this should look pretty good right now. And it's, yeah, we can solve this pretty quick because I can combine my like terms, the 5n and the 10n, to make that 15n, which equals 28 now. And I'll divide both sides by 15 to make that 1n, right, the coefficient. And now this n, you can make it 1n, whatever, equals 28 over 15, but that's simplifiable. It, uh, uh, wait a second. Nope. It's not simplifiable. So the final answer is just 28 over 15. Uh, actually, this one, this is an equation, but it's also a proportion. And if we can remember some methods for solving proportions, we should be good. <clears throat> so there's different ways to solve proportions. Most of you prefer the method of cross-multiplication. At least most of my students in the past have. Now, if you're one of those that prefers fish method, that's okay. You could still use the fish method if you'd like, all right? Uh, but I'm going to use cross-multiplication on this one, which means that when we cross-multiply, we're going to get equality out of that. So I'm going to start with the 8 times 15 first, which is going to give me 120 on that. You can check your calculators make sure I did my math right. But 3 times 2x on the other side is going to give us 6x's on that. And now to solve, it's a one-step equation. I just divide both sides by 6. To get x equals, what is that, 20? And we can check, right? Because 2 times 20 is 40, so 15 over 40 is actually 3 over 8, so that works. Uh, that, that value of x makes that a true statement. One. So like I said, uh, just like we did on that last one with cross-multiplication, most students prefer cross-multiplication. This one would be hard if you were to use fish method. Uh, so I'm not going to use fish method, although it is doable. So on this one, cross-multiplication, right? So again, this cross, where it would be 4 times x plus 3, is going to equal the other cross, which is 2 times x minus 1. Uh, and you guys hopefully can see exactly what's going on here. It just ends up being a distribution type problem where we need to distribute the 4 into this set of parentheses and the 2 into this other set of parentheses. So uh, now I've got 4 times x, which is 4x, and then 4 times 3, which is positive 12, equals 2 times x, which is 2x, and then we got 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So it just becomes an equation that we could solve. Now, I haven't shown this yet, but I want to show you guys that you can do it if you'd like to, at least the rest of you that remain. Again, it's not required that you use this method. It's just, it, and I'm, I'm not doing it simply just to make the video shorter here or this lesson. I'm doing it to show you that it is possible that you can do two operations at the same time. Uh, it's almost like using the switch and stay game is what it is. Now, I'm still going to choose to put the x's on the left and the numbers on the right. That's good. Uh, but I'm going to do both of these operations at the same time. What I mean by that is I'm going to get rid of the 12 right now, but simultaneously I'm going to get rid of the 2x at the same time. So see how that creates two sets of zeros for us at the same time? Which, whether you think that's easy or not, is up to you. It just is a method, and it works for some people, and it makes it faster for others. 
Uh, for some of you, you may not feel comfortable using this method until you've had a little bit more experience, but it works. 4 minus 2x is 2x. Because I've maintained equality, that's why it works, okay? Negative 2 minus 12 is going to be negative 14. And now I have a one-step equation. And yes, it, it does shorten the video, but I didn't do that for just the shortening purpose. Now I've got the 1x equals, now it's negative 7. But I am going to check, just like I always do, because uh, it's x plus 3, so it's negative 7 plus 3 divided by 2. Now my calculator gives me negative 2, so let's try the next one. Uh, negative 7 minus 1, which is negative 8, divided by 4 is also negative 2. So that value of x makes the original equation a true statement, and that's how I'll keep it right there. So let, yeah, let's apply that method where we want common denominators so we can just get rid of the denominators. Now, you're going to find that it ends up almost being exactly the same. This one may work a little different. Uh, again, I, I just takes a little bit of analysis at first. Now, if you're like, you know, I know um, I, I'm not really concerned about the lowest common denominator or the lowest common multiple between the two denominators that are given. Uh, and So you don't have to notice that 4 is a multiple of 2. So you could say, well, I'm going to multiply this side by 4, and I'm going to multiply this side by 2. Yeah, well, it, I'm sorry, 2 over 2 and 4 over 4, and then that would work. But uh, I hope that you guys notice that those two are multiples of each other. But that method of using opposite denominators to create common denominators would work. I hope that, well, uh, I feel like I didn't explain that very well, but... In any case, I'm just going to use the lowest common multiple, which in this case is 4. Uh, and that's going to make that real easy. Now, notice I put that x plus 3 in parentheses because it's I need two groups of it. Okay, so I've multiplied the numerator by 2, all of it, and also the denominator by 2. So this now becomes, and this is before the distribution on this, 2 times x plus 3 over 4 now. And then the other side of that we didn't touch because it already had a denominator of 4. So I got x minus 1 over 4 on the right side. And yeah, again, you guys noticed, we were only dealing with two terms, by the way. Uh, one with division and then one with division. And yeah, we could have split it up into four terms, right? That would stink. So now that I have common denominators, rewrite it. And again, it's for all the terms on both sides of the equal sign. Now that they're the same, just rewrite it without any denominators. 2 times x plus 3 equals x minus 1, and we'll distribute the 2, making that 2x. I'm going to skip a step and just make that plus 6, and this equals x minus 1. So again, just for the sake of time, I'm going to split this up, and I'm going to do the two principles of equality in 1. So I'm going to get rid of the x right there. I'll show it as minus 1x, what the heck. And I'll subtract 6 from both sides, so that zeroes out this one and this one which is just going to make this a little bit faster. Now it shows 1x equals negative 7, which is the same answer that we got uh, at the end of this problem with the other method.